had to briefly say what QB3 is. I see it as being an interface between academia and the private sector to help the two of them work in partnership to address society problems. Universities don't in general have people who are knowledge brokers or integrationists. So we believe what you really need to have is people who actually connect across boundaries that are not normally connected, people who are dedicated to make the introduction to the people in different disciplines and point out why they should be talking to each other. I'm Reg Kelly, I'm the director of QB3. I've been at UCSF forever. I've been here almost 40 years now. I came here in 1971, which actually was just at the end of the flower power period in San Francisco. I had enjoyed being executive vice chancellor, but I'm actually not cut out for that type of uh, university role. And so I decided to quit and go off in my sailboat and sail off around the world. And on the way down to Mexico, I began to realize that sailing wasn't enough for me and that it was too self-indulgent. So I, I came back to QB3 because it was a tremendously exciting challenge. My name is Robert Blaget. I'm a co-founder and president of Alapartis Biotechnologies, and we're one of the companies in the QB3 garage. Alapartis searches for really good enzymes that convert biomass into sugar, and this is a critical first step in making renewable fuels and renewable chemicals. So I graduated uh, December 2006, and basically spent a good year just trying to figure out how to get a company off the ground, how to take an idea and turn it into reality. And a lot of it began right here in this garage, built some of the original equipment, and it was really just a brainstorming session to figure out uh, how to found Alapartis. My name is Stephen Carey, Chief Executive Officer, Omniox. So Omniox is all about delivering gases. Many tumors are starved of oxygen, and that limits how effective therapies can be, like radiation and chemotherapy. If you can get more oxygen into a tumor just transiently, uh, the outcomes of therapy would be uh, much, much better. I spent two years trying to start the company, going into professors' offices who didn't know me and getting their feedback. You know, some meetings you go to them, they shoot you down. Uh, you go to venture capitalists, they tell you that you're so far from being a real company that it's just not worth your effort. So I think the surprise is how hard it is. Starting companies, especially if they're being started with faculty, we often had to try and mentor faculty and how you actually go about starting a company or whether you should even start one in the first place and the various steps of finding a market, finding a reimbursement strategy, writing a business plan. So what we did is started providing a set of services to the faculty members, what we call the Innovation Toolkit, to help them interact better within private sector. I'm David Breslauer. I'm a co-founder and chief scientific officer of Refactored Materials. We're a biotech company working on making a synthetic spider silk, which, as you've probably seen from the Spider-Man films, is one of the strongest materials in existence. We're three months old, and coming from an academic background and working as a graduate student, um, you tend to approach every problem as, oh, I can spend as much time on this as possible, and eventually it'll get solved. Uh, it's been sort of almost a shocking experience coming into a startup culture, the, the rate at which things happen, decisions change, and you can't spend eternity on one problem. Sometimes you just have to drop it and move on. We're gonna leave that question unanswered. As a scientist, it can be very shocking, and you realize on a day-to-day -day basis, oh, wait, there, there's a lot more startup here than I, than I realized. The challenge of being an entrepreneur is that it can be incredibly lonely. When you start to build a team, the feeling transforms from being so stressful to being so almost euphoric. I mean, when you've got a team of people around the table and each one is working on a different piece of a project, you can get down in an hour what would have normally taken a week. Building Alapartis has absolutely been the most challenging thing that I have ever done. And it certainly wouldn't be possible without the support of QB3. One of the really great things about working in the QB3 garage is that it's an open lab environment and really a nexus for innovation. We collaborate with the other companies in there, we talk constantly with them, and it's really helpful to have that collaborative research environment, especially when you're trying to pull off the impossible. Working in the incubator space has just been a lot of fun. Everybody's fairly young, graduated from similar programs with similar backgrounds, and everybody is very encouraging and supportive. Um, everybody wants to see uh, entrepreneurship succeed. So I'm sometimes asked why I'm passionate about QB3 and I have to say that it's just like 
being a scientist all my life. Now, when I was doing cell biology, I really wanted to do things that no one else had ever done before. I think we've managed in the last six years to really extend the envelope of what universities had been doing. One of my big dreams would be that every major research university in the United States has a QB3-like organization. Trying to think about how we can create a community. We've got the scientists, we're going to have the hospital, we're going to have the biotech companies, all part of an innovation ecosystem, but it needs QB3 to bring those, those areas together.